I'd like to uh, welcome you all uh, to this evening launch of the Quality Criteria for Core Medical Training. The JRCPTB is the education and training arm of the Federation of the three UK Royal Colleges of Physicians. And although we are in London today, this is absolutely a national federation activity. We're delighted to see leaders from Health Education England, NES from Scotland, as well as Wales and Northern Ireland. However, the bottom line is that this is about improving core medical training. So it's particularly pleasing to see some of our college tutors and some of our trainees for whom uh, this will at the end be their reality. The JRCPTB does not just set the curriculum for 25 medical specialties and three subspecialties, but is actively involved in supporting the quality management of physicianly education as part of the national quality structure as set out by the GMC as the regulator. This initiative is particularly focused on the early years of physicianly training post-foundation. Originally, the Lost Tribe, core medical training came into existence as part of managed programmes from 2007. After general practice training, it's the most popular specialty post-foundation, and core medical trainees are absolutely fundamental to the day-to-day -day running of the acute medical services in our hospitals across the UK. All here know the environment has got increasingly pressurised year on year, and it's perhaps not surprising that the survey of core medical trainees, jointly run by the Royal College of Physicians London and the JRCPTB in 2013, found great concern because of heavy service demand accompanied by loss of training opportunities, wide variation in the quality of supervision, and perhaps most worryingly, a loss of interest in pursuing a career in the acute medical specialties, including the absolutely crucial role of the medical registrar. The ideas were then widely debated within the colleges, including their trainees' committees and through the Core Medical Training Advisory Committee of the JRCPTB. A huge amount of work has been done to refine them down to 20 quality criteria that if, if implemented for every programme would significantly improve the training and educational experience of many core medical trainees and inevitably improve patient care. We also believe it would reinvigorate interest in acute and internal medicine. These quality criteria are not a comprehensive set of standards but designed to be implemented to drive up experience locally. While we would like some of them to be in the curriculum, we obviously need to demonstrate to the regulator they can be delivered successfully before we're able to get approved curriculum change. I think what has been most encouraging is the commitment of all parties involved in medical education to support these and to help drive improvements. We've got support from the delivery arms such as Health Education England, NES and the Deaneries in Wales in Northern Ireland. Support from the GMC with support from COPMED, the postgraduate deans and all the heads of School of Medicine. But just producing a document that receives good support does not make change happen by itself. Importantly, we'll be auditing both with the three colleges and through the GMC survey progress with these, uh, with these criteria. We're going to publish comprehensive data because we believe that, as in much in healthcare, publishing data almost invariably improves quality, and that's not just because doctors are deemed to be naturally competitive. So, over the next half an hour, we're going to hear from the presidents of the three colleges, uh, from Health Education England, uh, sadly Wendy Reed can't come, but Patrick Mitchell is here, uh, from one of our lead educators, and of course, a trainee.